Good morning, or depending on you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told I had a voice radio, so today I am showing you my Vika Vault Tapu Bulu deck list. A bunch of people were asking for a deck list when I did my previous video, so I thought, you know what, have a deck list. Now, I also play some games in this video with this deck list. A couple of them are against Gardevoir. I still contend that this has a good Gardevoir matchup, but watch the games, you be the judge of that. And it's an unusual list because it plays both Auron Guru and Octillery, but you know what? I think it works. So sit down, grab yourselves a nice cold beverage, and enjoy. Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice radio. So today, we are going to be streaming some Pokemon TCG. We're going to be playing post rotation. And I think largely today, not entirely, but largely, we are going to be streaming the Cavolt Tapu Bulu. Now, if we take a quick look at the list, it's a slightly unusual list. And the reason it's slightly unusual is because I'm playing both Octillery and Auron Guru. And the reason is very simple. I love Vika Volt Bulu. Terrible matchup against Metagross. But pretty much anything else I feel is winnable if you set up and if you get that turn to Vika Volt. So I really want as much consistency as I can get my hands on. So with my turn one Bridget, I'm going to grab a Remoray, try and evolve it in turn two into an Octillery. But if my Remoray's prized or my Octillery's prized, I've got Uranguru. And maybe in the mid to late game, maybe I've even got both of them out just to raise my chances of getting that turn to Vika Vault. All right. Don't love this opening hand because the electric energy doesn't actually do very much for me at the moment. So, yeah. Okay. Now, I've been saying for a while now that I don't think this is a terrible matchup. The problem is, this matchup comes down to starts. If I get a good start, I'm very confident. Because we're basically two hit KOing, but I can get a one hit KO at some point during the game when I play a Professor Kukui. Problem is, if my opponent has a really good start, same thing other way round. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, playing one promo Giratina is great against Greninja. So, something to think about. Yeah. I like. I mean, my opponent had a good start that game. So. Oh, I don't really want to lose any of these. Hmm. I like all of these cards. Right. We're going to have to do it this way round, ladies and gentlemen. So, we've got Remoraid, but Octillery is prized. Not a problem. So... We're going to grab ourselves a Lele. Let's just check we've got Bridget. We've got Bridget. So, we haven't got Octillery, so we don't go Remoraid here. We just grab ourselves a Tapu Lele. We play the Tapu Lele. And we grab a Supporter card. We grab a Bridget. And then really here... I mean, we've already got one Bulu out. So, play Bridget. And then we might as well go... Oh, we're not even going to be able to War and Guru for a single card here. Yeah, and then we've still got space for for one Bulu on the bench afterwards. Um, oh, to be perfectly honest here, I don't even really want to put this Lightning Energy on Bulu. Because when I Strong Charge next turn, it's not going to do much good. So I'm actually going to put it on War and Guru... See if we can use him at some point in the future. Little bit upsetting that we didn't get a grass energy, but then again, my opponent could take advantage of that. So, hey-ho. Oh. Oh, okay. Now we're talking. Oh, this, this sucks. There's nothing we can really do about it, because here's the thing. We have nothing. Now, I know our opponent has nothing, but we have nothing. There's nothing we can do with this hand. So, there's no point playing the choice band yet. So, we're going to win. And this is a bit of a risky play. But if we get what... Oh. Seriously, where's my grass energy? Oh, this is rubbish. This is absolutely rubbish. Now, we can still do this. Ah, 
how many Guzma have we got? We haven't gotten rid of any Guzma yet. So, this is somewhat of a risky play. But here's the thing. Ah, oh, but then he's going to get us right back, isn't he? Now, I'm slightly worried here, because if, even if I hit the grass energy, then, I'm, then he's just going to KO me back. Because I'm going to have free energy on, and he's already got enough energy. To tell you what, I know it doesn't matter, because if he gets a double colorless, he's got the KO anyway. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to strong charge. And we're going to get those two energy onto the Bulu. I'm running out of lightning energy, you know, ladies and gentlemen. Because I only play four. And this is the fourth one. Which is kind of upsetting. So, we're going to bench the Tapu Coco. We're going to give the Tapu Coco an energy. And we're going to hope to draw an energy recycler or a Skylar. And we're going to instruct for free. Cool. Now, the one good thing about this... Other than the fact that I'm a complete idiot. The one good thing about this is... I wasn't going to get the grass energy anyway. That wasn't a misplay, although it kind of almost was. Because here's the thing. If I hadn't attached the lightning energy to Tapu Koko... Then I would have only drawn the candy sycamore. I wouldn't have drawn the grass energy anyway. And it's kind of irrelevant. It was never going to happen. I was never going to draw that grass energy. I don't think it... Well, I mean, it was a misplay, but it didn't hurt me. If I don't attach the lightning to Coco, I don't draw the grass energy, and it's a moot point anyway, at which point I would have just attached the lightning energy to Tapu Coco. So I'm really not that upset. The problem is, is it's been an awkward game setup-wise for me now. And I don't know if I needed the second grubbin. And the problem is now that I don't have a bench space for a new Bulu. Although, if I draw into Vika Vault, we're going to be in a fine position. Yeah, now this is the problem now. I think I've lost the game. Because the problem is... Now, how much do I do with that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be honest here, what we're going to have to do is go Oranguru. Because I can get half of a KO with Oranguru and hopefully end them into a bad hand. Oh my goodness, we're losing two, two candies. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go Strong Charge and we're only going to see Grass Energy. We're going to pop a Grass Energy onto the Oranguru. We're then going to pop another Energy onto the Oranguru. And we're going to have to Sycamore. We're not getting a KO here. But we're getting half of a KO. So <laughs> Good news is I've got Choice Band. Now. Oh, if I could have a Lele next turn. If I could grab a Lele next turn for a Kukui. To be honest, it doesn't even need to be next turn. It just needs to be at some point in the near future. Then I can go and get a KO. So. I don't hate this position. I'm just trying to do some math. So we're doing 60 plus 60 is 120. So no, the choice band here doesn't make any difference. So we're just going to go ahead and use Psychic. Yes, eventually we're going to use Psychic. And to be honest, we could next turn if when we'd have to play a Skylar, but we might, we'll probably end up doing that anyway, to be honest. If we play a... Oh, that's a lot of resources he's losing. It's a lot of resources. But he gets Sushi Master. Yeah. All right. Oh, I'd love a Guzma next turn to take out this. Because the problem is the Octillery now kind of turns off that end play. Oh, and he's got the Gallade as well. Boo! Have we lost any Guzma? I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, I do like this deck, but I'm not loving these games today. Hello, Broken Pike! Right, so. Here comes me opponent, ladies and gentlemen. 
I know he's got the KO here, but we should be able to get the KO back. And now the question is, what does my opponent have? Because the problem is, they've already got enough to get a KO with this. So I'm wondering whether it might be worth just playing a Skylar for an Energy Recycler. We're going to have to just a strong charge, to be honest. And then I'm wondering if it's worth getting a KO with Tapu Koko. I think it is. But now, of course, we don't have the Oranguru, so we had better draw something off these prizes. <laughs> and now we can just go ahead and strong charge. And then we can pop a Grass Energy onto Bulu, Lightning Energy onto Coco, take the KO with the Coco. And to be honest, there's an incredibly good chance that my opponent has got the return KO with his Pokemon. So, essentially, it comes down to... Oh, I wish I had the Octillery on... Uh, the Remoraid on the bench. If we can top deck a Kukui or a Ultra Ball or a Tapu Lele, and we've got, in theory, five outs in a deck of 22 cards. If we can draw into one of those cards, then next turn... I can attach a choice band, and I can Kukui, and I can KO. If I don't get one of those cards, I think the game's over, to be perfectly honest with you. He's got too much energy on a Gardevoir. The Bulu Gardevoir matchup really comes down to starts. If your opponent gets a load of energy on a Gardevoir, you win if you can go choice band Kukui in one turn. Hello, Jatros. If you don't, then you lose. If you get a better start, you basically just win. Because the thing about Gardevoir is, the way Gardevoir stops you winning is by using Acerola. But by using Acerola, they lower the amount of energy they've got. So whereas you can use your GX attack to heal, and you can use Acerola and then use Strong Charge, the Gardevoir player doesn't have that option. Oh, wait. I don't need Kukui, he's got 30 damage. So we've got the KO anyway next turn. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we are in a great position. We're in an amazing position. We don't actually need Kukui this turn. We need Kukui next turn. So that horn attack for 30 damage actually came in huge. Of course, my opponent may well try and attack with Gallade, which would wreck everything. So, question is, do they have a Guzma? They might. Don't come in for a player to support her. Um, if they do have a Guzma, I'm actually in a bad position because I currently, I don't have a Grass Energy in hand. So I'd need to draw into a Grass Energy or I would need to draw into a Rare Candy in order to get a second Vikavolt rolling. So, Guzma would be very bad right now. Very bad right now. But I can, if he doesn't Guzma, I can take out the Gardevoir this turn. And then I'm feeling pretty good. Okay, there goes Sycamore. Now I'm feeling better, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm feeling better. Because honestly, at this stage, I don't, See, the problem is we're still too hick. Oh, no, what am I talking about? Guzma. So, essentially... Oh. Great. I, I can KO that. I can KO that quite nicely. I'm not 100% sure what his plan is here. But okay. Oh, we got the Ultra Ball. Ladies and gentlemen, we got the Ultra Ball. It doesn't do us much good now. But it does do us an awful lot of good in the very near future.
because next turn we can Lele. And when we Lele, we should be able to Kukui, or not, or not even either Kukui or Guzma. Either way, we should get the win. I'm just checking for energy and whether it's worth using an energy recycler. So, I think at this stage, it's fair to assume I don't need either of these cards. So, Okay, so we've still got plenty of grass, but we have no lightning. So we're going to grab a Lele, and I know we've just used Ultra Ball, but what I'm doing here is just thinning out my deck a little bit. We're playing the Energy Recycler now so that we can get a proper Strong Charge next turn. And honestly, we might be in a decent position here. Now, I, I want to play the Choice Band, but I can't in case my opponent comes down with a Field Blower. They've played two... I haven't seen a guard of our list that plays free. So I should be all right. But no, I'm not going to risk it, ladies and gentlemen. We're just going to... Nature's judgment. We are going to discard all the energy. We're going to get the KO. And to be honest, we need either energy Kukui choice band. We've already got the choice band. Oh, I kind of I kind of don't want to be end. I'm going to be honest. I mean, if I don't get end, I win. It's as simple as that. Now, looking at my opponent's discard, they've played 3N. So they've probably only got one left in deck. But I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, the amount of regret... Okay. But he doesn't win the game with this. So, energy choice band and I win. Energy Choice Band or Second Vika Vault, guaranteed win. Like, straight off the bat. Ah, but he's played the Lele. This is clearly going to be for an N. And this is what it comes down to. Oh, this is going to be dodgy, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like I've played it all right, but at the beginning there were a couple of small mistakes. Uh, if you do want to get in the list to play, ladies and gentlemen, Whisper Toppers James... Right, this is all down to top decks now, because he's clearly got the KO next turn. What we got? Kakui and a Guzma. Right. Now, not bad. Not bad. Because here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. I've basically got three cards to draw. I've got the strong charge to get the energy on Bulu. And I've got the Kakui, which means Nature's Judgment will be doing 200 and get the KO. Problem is, I don't have the third energy. If I top deck a Grass energy, I win. If I play Kakui into a Grass energy, I win. Problem is, I'm in an awkward position here. Because... If I Kukui, I'm more likely to draw into Grass Energy before I use Strong Charge. But I've only got one Lightning Energy in the deck. Oh no, I've got more than that. Yeah, because I've got End. Um, but I, if I Kukui and draw too much energy, I lose. So, this is what it comes down to. If I draw an energy, I win. Otherwise, things are getting dodgy. Not good. Now, the great news here is, if I Kukui into a choice band, I also win, um, sorry, a rare candy, I also win the game. So, if I Kukui, and I draw a candy, or I draw one of my free grass energy, I win right here. If I don't, I lose on an N. And that's very upsetting. So, it's all down to the Kukui, ladies and gentlemen. What is that? I had the outs. I had plenty of outs, ladies and gentlemen. But unfortunately, nothing doing. So. Sorry, light's got to go on, ladies and gentlemen. It was getting way too dark in here. Um, although I know, weirdly, the face cam is worse there. That's upsetting. I'm going to be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. But I think that proves my point about Vika Volt Bulu. I didn't get... If my Octillery wasn't prized, that end doesn't hurt us and I win the game. 
If I don't get end, I win the game. If I draw one of my outs with Kukui, I win the game. I don't really mind about losing that game. It's a testing game. But my point is this. Look at how much went wrong that game. Look at the turn I whiff the energy to get the KO on the routes. Look at the turn, or look at the fat Doctillery's price. Look at the late game end, etc. In a real game, in a scenario where I'm playing a full game, I don't think I lose. I think in a full game, 90% of the time, I think I win that game. So... Oh, in fact, 90% of the time, Octillery isn't prized. So I'd say probably 95% of the time I don't lose that game. And I went second. So to be... No, Topaz James, there isn't really any salt here. You misunderstand me, sir. I don't really mind losing that. Because it doesn't really bother me. Because when you lose a game like that, that's so unlikely in testing, when you get to a real tournament, you're going to win those games. So, let's get rid of a Brox Grit and a Choice Band. And, okay, so, let's go Lele. Check we've got the Bridget, because otherwise we ain't getting a Lele. And we're going to play the Lele. Now, the problem is this is going to fill my bench, which is very upsetting. But there isn't really too much we can do about it, so... To be honest, I don't even really want a second grub in, but I'm he should be able to KO that grub in next turn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab those two. And I know this is cluttering our bench, but as the game progresses, we'll be doing slightly better. Now we can instruct for one card. Please don't be a rare candy. Yeah, I'll do. Again, I would have liked the turn one energy, but I don't really mind. Oh, no. I mean, generally on the stream, it's... I really don't tend to get that caught up in stream games because they're stream games. But I will be honest with you. There are some games where there is legitimate salt. Where the salt is real. So, if I could top deck a Vika Vault, that would be amazing. Yeah. See, this is the problem, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't see why, but... Every one of my opponents is drawing godly. Turn two, and he's got a guard of wire with a double colorless energy on. Two routes on the bench, and a Sylveon GX ready to go. I bet he's got another rare candy. This is upsetting, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> but again, testing like this is good. Because in tournaments, this generally doesn't happen. You don't usually see people drawing this darned well. Oh, now he's using Sylveon. Now, I know he's going to get set up here. But, and actually, to be honest, not having an end sucks. But clearly, I'm not going to top deck the end. We all know I'm not going to top deck the end. But again, it doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen. Like I say, I'm going to point these things out. But it doesn't really, like, I, I know, you know, I'll, I'll play up the salt on the stream, because I'm going to be honest, it's kind of fun. But, you know, I'm not going to end the stream tonight. My wife's gone over her friends. And when my wife gets back from her friends, I'm not going to be like, the stream was mean. Because, who cares? You know, it's, it's really not an issue. So, oh, how much do we risk it? I mean, the answer is, of course we risk it. So. We get the Tapu Lele, act we get the Tapu Bulu active, we Sycamore, and we see what we can get. Okay. So we can attach the Grass energy first of all, that's nice. We can afford to lose a Lightning energy, and we can afford to lose a Switch, I reckon. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab the Octillery, because we've still got a chance here. We're going to evolve one of these. We're going to evolve one of these. We're then going to use Guru Because we probably won't get another... Ch okay! There's the Vika Vault. Can we Abyssal Hand into a candy? We can not. 
Hmm. Problem is we... Oh, we don't have the energy for next turn. But then again, we got Octillery. All right. You know what? Yeah, we can Skylar for an Ultra Ball next turn. Now, this is actually a crucial play. My opponent has no energy on his side of the board. Now, I know we used Mystical Ribbon, and I know he's going to have at least two Gardevoir, maybe three this turn. But that Sylveon is now in range. So... And it actually, it can't retreat. What is the retreat cost on Sylveon? It is two. So he's got to waste energy attachments getting out the active. Which means he shouldn't be able to get a KO this turn. I mean, he might, to be honest, but I'm hoping he doesn't. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. Next turn, we're going to Skylar for a candy. Double Vika Vault. Hope we can... Oh, you suck, man! But again, if you can do well in games... That is arguably a better hand. That is actually probably a better hand, to be honest. Because we've got the Heavy Ball for Vika Vault. We've got Ultra Ball for Vika Volt. We've got Skylar for Candy. And then we've got both Oranguru and Octillery to help us draw. This is... Okay, I got a tweet earlier and I don't think I actually mentioned it. By the way, click follow if you haven't already. I am not a fan of Sylveon in Gardevoir decks. Okay. That makes our life a little bit easier. Now, wondering what we do here. There is an argument to not go. Because what we really need is we need choice band, Bulu. Have we played any choice? Ah, we're going to be down to one choice band. Because if we can get Choice Band, Bulu, and Kukui next turn, we're going to be in a great position. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We are actually going to go double Vika Volt. And the reason we're going to go double Vika Volt is because please don't Kukui be prized. D why? Okay. The plan here was you get double Vika Volt this turn. Then next turn, we can... Try and find ourselves a Kukui and get a one-hit KO on Gardevoir. So that he doesn't get two one-hit KOs in a row. That, ladies and gentlemen, is not happening. Which sucks. So, that's a bit rubbish. So, now we are going to Skylar for the candy. And now we can candy up. Problem is, he's putting all his energy on one Gardevoir. As a general rule, it's not a huge issue if your opponent puts all their energy on one Gardevoir. Because if your opponent puts all their energy on one Gardevoir, we could Electro Cannon next turn. That is an option. We could Electro Cannon for 150 and then clean up with Bulu or even use Oranguru's Psychic. I think that's what we're probably going to do next turn, ladies and gentlemen. But I don't want to get too much energy out my deck. Because he's going to see what we're doing. So, he's going to need 6 energy or 5 and a choice band to KO. You know what? We're going we're gonna to Abyssal Hang because we might as well. But yeah. ah, oh, Really wish we had that N at the beginning of the turn. So... We're going to Nature's Judgment. We are going to discard the energy. Now, if we draw into our Kukui off these prizes, we're in a fantastic position. I mean, of course we don't. But had we done so, because this is what generally happens in the Bulu Gardevoir matchup. You can often trade quite nicely, and then this happens. Your opponent goes and just gets a boatload of energy on a Gardevoir, and you're in a bad position. So you put free energy on a Bulu with a Choice Band and a Kukui. You take a one-hit KO, and then you're in a fantastic position. Problem is, when your Kukui is prized and you don't draw it, then this happens. Good news is we got Energy Recycler. 
Yeah. And now he's building up to do it again, and at this stage, we may well have lost. Good news is, we can Lysander, or we can Guzma up this Tapu Lele at some point in the future, which is nice. And we're going to force him to KO an Oranguru, just to be clear. Because we can currently do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 120, 180. See, the annoying thing is, with a Kakui, we, we could get the KO with Oranguru. But we can't. Wait a second. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If we can draw a choice band, ladies and gentlemen, we can get the KO with Tapu Lele here. It's going to take a lot of energy, but we've got a lot of energy. So, first things first, let's play an energy recycler. And let's get all of this energy back. Then, we're going to strong charge... Onto Lele. And then we're going to strong charge. Onto Lele. So, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're currently hitting 200. There's no point attaching another energy here. Because if we attach another energy here, then... All that's going to happen is we're going to be hitting 220 and not getting the KO. So we can put an energy on Bulu. Now, do we Abyssal Hand for... F of course we Abyssal Hand for free. What a silly, what a silly thing to say. Because what else do we need here? <gasps> now that was a good draw. Skylar for Choice Band. And then next turn... But we still don't have the Guzma. Although we've got Octillery and Oranguru to try and draw it. And now we can energy drive for 230. Not my preferred way to do it. We still don't have a Kukui. <laughs> oh, I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, that was a good play. And now, like, what does my opponent do? Now, the really annoying thing is here. We still got a choice band left in the deck. Oh, wait, I discarded my Kukui. Oh, maybe, oh, oh, maybe it isn't prize. Maybe I'm just being a moron. Sorry, I'm being a moron. Thing is here, Guzma wins the game. If we draw a Guzma, we win the game next turn. Tapu Lele goes down and we win. <gasps> oh, he gave us a Lele. And we got three Guzma. None are in the discard. They can't all be prized. Ladies and gentlemen, as long as we don't put the Bulu in the active, we win the game. Yes. I like this, ladies and gentlemen. This is... I've been saying all week... I did a video about Tapu Bulu Vikavolt. And I said it might be the best deck in the format. And the general response I got was, it loses to Metagross, loses to Gardevoir. Now, if you watch the video, I say very clearly, yes, it loses to Metagross. You have an horrific Metagross matchup. And there's very little you can do about that. You're just going to lose. But it doesn't really matter because that loses to Volk. So we've all got options here. <laughs> oh, we even get a second Tapu Lele. Nice. Never mind. We don't need both the Tapu Lele. We only need one Tapu Lele. So, I wonder if we can draw it with Sushi Master. That'd be pretty cool. Can we draw into it manually? We can't. But it doesn't really matter. So, we play that. We do want to search for a supporter card. We want to grab ourselves a Guzma. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will be the game. Yeah! Guzma up the Tapu Lele. So, I like this deck. I really do like the Oranguru Octillery combination. Because there's way too... I, I never drew what I needed in previous turns. And you can see there... My deck ran well. Sushi Master is a widely accepted... Um, it's a widely accepted nickname for Octillery. 
Oh, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen. I do not like starting grubbing. But starting grubbing with Bridget, Rare Candy, and Skylar in my hand. Well, have I gone first yet today? I don't know if I have. I'd love to be going first this game. Because, yeah. Now, the bad news is we don't actually have a grass energy. Ooh! We're not playing against a Gardevoir. No, Donald didn't coin it, ladies and gentlemen. It's been around for a very long time. It's one of those, it's so old, I don't think anyone really coined it. I think it's just there. Hey, Nick. Or me. What do I think about Greninja? I think about Greninja the same thing I've thought about it for a long time. If it sets up, it's great. The kind of people that I play on stream should be going to Worlds with Greninja. Why do I always go second? Boo! Um, and also, Greninja takes a pretty hard loss to Golisopod. And it's unfavorable against Bulu. But the problem is, Bulu is... um. Uh, the problem is with Bulu that th th they can, if like you saw earlier in the stream, if they do get all set up, there's nothing you can do about it. Hey ho. Very nice. Toppers James once again crushing it on the modding front. Well, I'm going to be honest. Why can't I have... Why can't I go first? I want to go first. Now, the really awkward thing is here, I'm drawing into all of my lightning energy. I really want a grass energy. Because essentially with this deck, the goal is, turn one or two, you bench a Bulu with a grass energy. And then turn two, you Candy Vikavolt go. As it stands, I'm not loving this. I'm probably going to lose that grub in next turn. Oh, no, I'm not, because Psychic won't actually get a KO. Ha! So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bridge it for a Grubbin, a Remoraid, and a Bulu, assuming my Sushi Master isn't prized, and then we're going to roll. Downside here, this is Ability Lock. Ability Lock really, really hurts this deck. Oh, this is nice. So, Remoraid, Grubbin, Bulu. Octillery's not prized. Um, field Blower, I've got two in my deck, which is useful. We probably need to check for Lele. We've got two of them. And Skylar. we got one Skylar. We've got two Skylar prized. Skylar generally, ladies and gentlemen, is how we search out those Field Blowers to be able to use abilities. And we could be locked up of abilities from the second turn onwards. So I don't like this very much at all. Uh, I kind of want to go. So the other thing is, I've not really got anywhere to put my lightning energy this turn, but I can't afford to play the Ultra Ball because I really need that for grubbing. So, and there's not really any point putting the lightning energy on the Bulu because it doesn't really do anything for the Bulu because I need grass, grass, lightning, and I'm not going to get double strong charge next turn. So this kind of sucks. No. It's not even worth putting it down. I mean, the good news is I can Ultra Ball next turn. And to be honest, I'm going to have to Ultra Ball 2 Lightning Energy. Because I need... It's my only Skylar. And I'm going to need that to grab my Field Blowers. And... Yeah. I'm going to need Skylar. And I'm going to need Candy. And I'm going to end. Oh! I had such a good hand! Oh, of course, one in hand, one in deck. Sorry, I've only got one prized. Thank you. See, that's such a worse hand. The other thing is, and this matchup especially, if you go first, you are guaranteed a turn with abilities if you can get the turn two Vika Vault. Here, my opponent went first, turned off abilities before I could ever evolve, so I've now got to do everything the hard way. So, there goes that. And then it's just an N. And then it's just cross your fingers. To be perfectly honest. <sighs> rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. So, let's play Heavy Ball. And get ourselves a Charger Bug. 
So we can do this the old-fashioned way. And then, to be honest, I don't really mind if my opponent KOs the grub in. So, bit of a slow start, but we're doing okay. Because in theory next turn, we should be able to get something going. I mean, if we can draw into either a Vika Vault or a Float or a Field Blower or an Ultra Ball, we're good. Because as long as we can get Vika Vault Field Blower, we're fine. I can use the Lele to grab a Skylar to get either the Field Blower or the Ultra Ball. But I can't use it to get both. Okay, I like N here. That was not a terribly useful hand. That wasn't what I wanted. So, come on, something better. That'll do, pig. That'll do. I really like that. Because what I can actually do, I can candy the Vika Vault. Oh, you suck. Still not the end of the world. I've got the candy. Um. Okay. I mean, I'm going to be honest. Octillery isn't really that important. Oh, we need choice band. We don't have a choice band. We need field blower and we need choice band. That's a bit too much to ask for. So, my opponent uses GX attack. This is, and this, this matchup is, is exceedingly simple. If you are not screwed by abilities, you win. If you are screwed by abilities, you lose. Simple as that. So. Yeah. And that was a really good play for my opponent. I don't know what I can do here. So, Psychic is going to do 30, 60, 90, 150 with a Choice Band will KO. So, I've got to get the energy off him. So, to be honest, I might as well just hit 30 this turn and build up a Bulu on the bench. That might be the way to go. So... Don't know what to do here, ladies and gentlemen. I really don't know what to do. Because the thing is, I cannot get the KO. I need Field Blower and Choice Band. I can't have them both from one Skylar. So, if I Skylar for a Field Blower, I'm not KOing. He can then just KO me back if I don't discard the energy. And if I do discard the energy, he's just going to have a Floatstone ready. So, what we're going to do... We're going to Skylar for an N. And then we're just going to Horn Attack. He can't KO me if I'm using Horn Attack. Now, what he is going to do here is confuse me. What he's really doing is helping me buy some time. So I don't mind that. I'm waiting for the turn I've got Field Blower Choice Band. So, if he hits me for 30 and confuses me, cool. Sorry, 60 and confuses me, yeah. I'm not in that much danger here. So, there goes the field blower. Getting rid of both of those. And actually here, what we can do is we can strong charge... Onto the bench, Bulu. And then... No, I'll tell you what. We're not even going to... We're not even going to muck around here. We're going to Skylar. For a switch. Now, again, we need to watch our items. But this is only item number four. Now, there was an argument there to play the end. And maybe you draw the switch and the Vika Vault. Too much could go wrong. I'd love a choice band. We don't have a choice band. We're just going to take the KO here. Now, again, we're not in a brilliant position here. Because we still need our other field blower to get some kind of KO. But 
this is the best we can do. Best we can do. We can enter four next turn and hopefully we can make something out of it. Although, again, if all I'm doing next... I mean, really, my opponent needs to just keep using Psybeam for 30. Well, brilliant, mate. But what's that really going to help you with? Although, I really wish I'd taken a Guzma the previous turn. Because if I'm not ability locked, I win this game. Like, without ability lock, this game is super, super favourable. With ability lock... You're in an awkward position. So I should say, and I always forget, but do click that follow button if you haven't already, ladies and gentlemen. I want to grow the PTCG radio community. So click follow if you haven't already. So one, two, three, four. He's hitting 80. So in theory here, now if he doesn't ability lock me, oh my goodness, I'm loving it. He's probably going to ability lock me. I assume he's going to ability lock me. If I can grab my field blower here, I'm going to be in a wonderful position. Because I can KO the Garboda using my GX attack. And then I've got a free energy Bulu that is not getting KO'd the following turn. And that is when the game really starts to turn around. Yeah, he plays a Sycamore. I kind of figured he would. He's getting rid of a whole bunch of resources, but he's he's almost certainly playing four Floatstone. So I assume he's going to hit the Floatstone. If he doesn't, that's probably game. He doesn't hit it! Now we're rolling. We need a, a Grass Energy. Hey, hey! Kind of like that Grass Energy. So... Double strong charge onto the active. Oh, we might as well bench Orang Oranguru. And to be honest, we might as well bench Coco, because if he KOs these two Bulus, he wins. Might as well play Oranguru for one. You never know what we're going to draw. <laughs> we can Ultra Ball for the second Vika Volt and put two energy on the benched Bulu. If we do that, we have a zero card hand. We've got Oranguru, but he's probably ability locking and ending us. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Ha! Never punished! And I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, that is a hand we can fall in love with. Because now we can do another strong charge onto the bench, Bulu. And now we really are feeling good. We've got Choice Band ready for next turn. We still haven't played many items. Next turn, we got Field Blower if we need it. We've got Choice Band to get the KO on any... Espeon that comes up, and then we got a free energy Bulu ready to roll. So, all we need to do here is Tapu Wilderness. My opponent... Oh, wait, can get a one-hit KO. Did I misjudge that? I might have misjudged that. Yeah, I misjudged that. A Psychic with a Choice Band will KO. My maths was faulty there, ladies and gentlemen. Good news, already played two choice bands, so he's probably here. Just going to confuse me. But he doesn't know that I've got switch choice band in hand, which will get the KO while leaving me with a Bulu with three damage counters on. Which, as far as I'm concerned, is essentially game. Not guaranteed, of course. Plenty can still go wrong. But I feel I'm in an exceptionally good position right now. No guarantee. So, we've been over 100 for a little while, ladies and gentlemen. This makes me happy. I want to ask my regular question. Where are you in the world? And what time is it wherever you are? I'd like to know. Hmm. I don't mind this play. But... Oh, wait a second. I'm still not ability locked. Question is, do I have any energy left in deck? So...
First things first, choice ban so we can get the KO. Now. Is it worth searching for the Bulu manually? Yes, it is. So, how many items have we played? Ah, oh, but I lose my last switch. Which could suck. Ah, but we still got Guzma. And once again, we haven't seen any Guzma. So... We've got one of each energy left in deck, which I don't like my chances, but we still got a Bulu. All right. How many items have we played? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's not getting a KO. Now, this, these are basically the last items we're allowed to play, ladies and gentlemen, until it really comes down to it. So, we need a Bulu. Now, we... Oh, I wish I'd seen how many energy were in deck. Doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter. Because we can strong charge, yeah. Because I forgot we got two strong charge. So if we didn't have any, we'd be fine. Now, what we really need here is an energy recycler. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Because I'm just thinking, if we play energy recycler, my opponent can one-hit KO with a Garboda. But then again, if we, like, even if he one hits with a Garboda, then it's not really that bad, because we've still got another Bulu on the bench. We're essentially a grass energy away from the win, but we're out of energy in our deck, ladies and gentlemen. There is no more energy in our deck. So we can nature's judgment. The one real saving grace here. The one thing that makes, that really warms me soul, I don't believe, oh, that's such a good draw. That's such a good draw. Yeah, the, I mean, the one thing that really warms my soul is, we've got turns. Oh, that's a good play. Now we can KO with Garboda, but apparently that's not what he wants to do. Here comes his Sycamore, which means... Right, can we win the game next turn? I honestly don't know if we can. Because the problem is, we need Energy Recycler and we need Choice Band. And at this stage, our opponent's getting a one-hit KO with Garboda. He's got two prizes left. So, if we hit Energy Recycler, Choice Band, we win. If we don't, we lose. Right, first things first, let's get our abilities back. This is so awkward. Because with an energy recycler here, or even, we can play the Brox, right? And then we can use and fail the Ultra Ball, and then we're drawing two cards. We need Choice Band. Problem is, we've got no energy left in deck. So, we could then play Skylar. But then... Oh, this is so awkward. I think that's the only way to do it, ladies and gentlemen. So, what we're going to have to do here... Going to get rid of Candy... Sk oh, I really don't want to do this. We're going to fail that. We're then going to play Brock's Grit. And put a whole bunch of energy into our deck. And then we're going to play a strong charge onto the active. We still don't have the choice band. And he's got the KO next turn for the win. Ah. Oh. Okay. And we're then going to strong charge again. And what we're really doing here is thinning out our deck. And also allowing the active to retreat. Choice ban for the win! Boo! So, what we do now is we manually retreat to Tapu Koko. And cross our fingers. We 
We've not lost yet. Hello, tents on fire. No, two recycler, one Brock. Getting energy back is too important. So, my opponent's win condition here. He needs choice band, a way to retreat, and a guzma. So if he hits, for instance, Floatstone, Guzma, Choice Band, he wins. Because he can Guzma up this Bulu. He then needs to retreat whatever he puts active. He pops on a Choice Band. Psychic will do 90 for the free energy on Bulu. Plus the 60 is 150. Plus the Choice Band is 180. But the thing is, I couldn't not attach to the Bulu. Because if my opponent pops a Floatstone on the Garboda and then ends me... I need to draw into an energy or I can't attack next turn. And I think an end to one with an ability lock is much more likely than choice band Floatstone Guzma. He might have it. And if he does have it, power to him, quite frankly. Cool, he doesn't have it. I should be okay then. Again, I need a choice band. I'm upset that I don't have the Sycamore. We've got plenty of outs in our deck. So, we can still win. The thing is, Brock is so good. And you don't really have a way to recover Pokemon other than Brock. And it's really bad against Garboda. Now, what my opponent... No, I was going to say he could get the KO with this, but then again, he's... Yeah. Actually, to be honest, a Guzma Psychic Energy would have won the game. I think Guzma Psychic Energy would have won the game for him. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah. Ha! Oh my god, I top decked a Sycamore! And a Choice Band! Ha! <laughs> oh! I'm like, Sycamore, that is the best top deck I could have. Other than Choice Band. And then I top the Choice Band! In your face! This is why I love Vikabulu. You've just seen me in consecutive games take down Gardevoir and Garboda. I like this deck. I think it's really good. It's not amazing. You saw me lose to a Gardevoir when I had Octillery Prize and things went aw awry. You saw me lose against Greninja when they just got an amazing setup but you know what ladies and gentlemen this is fun and that ladies and gentlemen is vika vault tapu bulu now hopefully you like the list but as always if you think the list isn't quite good enough make some changes if nothing else it's a decent starting point i think it's a good list but feel free to have a play around and change things but of course what i really want to know is what you think about tapu bulu so chuck it down in the comment section go nuts be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and twit for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus pods, etc., you can do so at patreon.com slash PTCG Radio. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.